Folks, this is great. Remember that meeting that Trump had with the Republicans and Democrats on immigration where the media was not kicked out? There's another one going on in Davos right now. Fox is carrying it. You don't need to watch it. I'm going to tell you what's happening here. And my description is going to be even better than what's happening because this is fabulous. There's a roundtable discussion. Trump is there with what are being called global business leaders in Davos. A couple of them look like they could be Bond villains. I mean, it just it's the, 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 the visuals here are perfect. One guy's wearing dark glasses. It looks like he's probably got a white cat in his lap that he's stroking that we can't see. Like the, the villain that runs Spectre. And Trump's asking these guys about their businesses. And what they do. And he's asking every one of them, are you going to invest in America? Oh, yes, we are. Oh, we intend to very much so. Yes, 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 indeed. I heard him speaking to a guy who's got some new product that contains aspirin. Trump said, what percentage of the product is aspirin? The guy answered, Trump said, it's not a big percentage. Do you own most of it? You, yes, I do. We are going to invest in America. We're looking forward to investing in America. Very good. Everybody's applauding. And, and, and the media is not being kicked out. And Trump is running this show. He's running this meeting. And all these people are staring at him in awe. And they all have smiles on their face. And he is paying rapt attention to every one of them. Everybody speaking, he's looking them straight in the eye. He doesn't appear above it. He doesn't appear bored. He doesn't appear to be there under any kind of duress. He appears to be exactly where he wants to be. And he appears to be as comfortable as if he was in his favorite place in the world. And these people can't get enough of the attention that he's giving them. Now, grab audio soundbite number 25. Is I want to share with you a Trump technique. Remember the meeting that Trump had with the Republicans and Democrats and Dianne Feinstein said, well, what we would really like is a clean DACA bill. You give us that. Then we'll come back later. We'll do comprehensive amnesty and all the Trump. So I can go for that. You guys, I'll find whatever you bring me. I'll take the heat. Remember how many of you in this thought, oh, my God, he just caved. I knew it was going to. And you were panicking. I told you, don't sweat it. This is not about immigration. This is Trump accomplishing something else. In this case, it was blowing up the premise of the Michael Wolf book. Same thing is happening here. Not, not this particular meeting. This is earlier today. This happened at the CNBC website. They posted a preview clip of an interview that Joe Kernan did with Trump that's set to air tomorrow morning. And this is it. I want you to listen carefully. To I like bilateral because if you have a problem, you terminate. When you're in with many countries, like with TPP, so you have 12 if we were in, you don't have that same, you know, you don't have that same option. But somebody asked me the other day, would I do TPP? Here's my answer. I'll give you a big story. I would do TPP if we made a much better deal than we had. We had a horrible deal. The deal was a horrible deal. NAFTA is a horrible deal. We're renegotiating it. I may terminate NAFTA. I may not. We'll see what happens. But NAFTA was a, and I went around and I tell stadiums full of people. So I'll you might re-enter. Or are, are you opening up the door to reopening TPP? I'm or? only saying this. I would do TPP if we were able to make a substantially better deal. Okay, so he's doing the same thing in Davos that he does here. He negotiates through the media. And in the process, keep somebody off balance. You heard Kurt, you would redo TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which Trump skunked. Trump blew that up in record time. And now here he is in Davos with a bunch of globalists opening up the possibility, hey, we could revisit that. We could go back to it if we get a much better deal. And so probably we're going to have some reactions from Trump voters. Oh, I knew it was too good to be true. Now he's opening up a new trade deal with the globe. That's not, I don't think what's happening here at all. I think Trump continues to do what he said he was always going to do, and that is make America great, as he defines it. He's going to do things that benefit America, and if they don't benefit America, he's not going to do them. But more than anything... He doesn't commit himself to anything here. He just opens up the possibility. TPP is something that a whole lot of people thought they wanted. And it was slammed shut 
and looked like it was gone forever, hopelessly gone. And now here of all people comes the Trumpster reviving it. And in the process reignites some interest from people who previously thought that their pet issue was dead. And in the process does all of this in public, keeps people off balance while appearing to be just like he was in the health care meeting with the Democrats, open, uh, flexible, accommodating. I still think there's a little bit of Trump trying to nuke the wolf book in all of these appearances. So he's he's actually tackling a bunch of things. Uh, at the same moment in the same event. So one of the Bond villain-looking guys at the Trump meeting just thanked him profusely for the expansion of the U.S. and global market economy. There are probably a lot of wealthy people at Davos who are invested in the United States. And if so, they are probably very, very happy Right now, it's eight o'clock over there. They're not at dinner. They are at a working meeting where everybody is celebrating and thanking Donald Trump. Barack Obama's name has not been heard. Grab sound by 26. This is the Bond villain, the guy that looked to me like the Bond villain. He's actually one of the few Americans at the Trump meeting. His name is William McDermott. He's the CEO of SAP, a software company. They sponsor Ernie Els, if you've seen the logo on caps and so forth. And anyway, McDermott was invited by Trump, the people to attend the meeting. And here's what McDermott said to Trump. Hey, Mr. President, I'd like to thank you, first of all, for having me, but also for spurring on all this great. Because these are all my customers. I know. <laughs> it's kind of amazing to have all your customers talking about adding jobs and growing their business. And it's just a real tribute to the momentum that you've created in the global economy. So I thank you very much. That again, William McDermott, the CEO of SAP or SAP. That's a major, major software company, custom software company for businesses and whatever they need in the enterprise. And it, he's right. Practically anybody, anybody in the business world uses SAP for one thing or another. And here he is thanking Trump for the worldwide economic growth. Trump is a rock star in Davos.